My name is Garson Hampfield. I'm a crossword anchor. A lot of people seem to be under the impression that, uh, you know, someone uh, comes up with the clues and the puzzle just magically draws itself. Of course, that's not how it works. Um, once the writer has written the clues, the puzzle goes to the crossword design team, or as we're known in the business, uh, I think for obvious reasons, the box team. Now, the box team will usually consist of, uh, number one, the square setter, uh, who's responsible for the, uh, the negative spaces, the, the black spaces on the puzzle. Uh, number two, the letter counter. Now, those two will work under the direction of the person who's responsible for the overall layout of the puzzle, uh, the grid man. You know, there's some old timers who will tell you that uh, women, because of their uh, poor spatial perception and uh, emotional uh, issues, that they're not cut out to work in the, in the crossword design industry. Well, I'm not going to wade into that one, but I, I will say that I've worked alongside some extremely capable lady grid men, and I have no issues with that whatsoever. After the grid man lays out the puzzle, it goes to the penciler who actually uh, draws the grid. And, and it's probably the most glamorous uh, role in the box team. Uh, the penciler is the, the guy who gets all the, all the fan mail, you know, the, the ladies know his name. Um, and then, then, of course, it comes to, to me, to the inker who inks the puzzle. And uh, lastly, there's the numberer and the colorist. The inker is sometimes known as the Bumphrey artist after Chad Bumphrey, uh, the first and greatest uh, inker of the modern puzzle era. I've actually got one of uh, Bumphrey's drawings in a, in a frame up here. This is an original Chad Bumphrey ink. Uh, believe me, it's well insured. Uh, this one drawing is worth almost $200. You know, it's a pity. A lot of the young guys uh, coming up today, they've, they've never even heard the name Chad Bumphrey. Some landmark moments in the evolution of crossword design. Um, number one, the invention of movable type by Johann Guttenberg. Um, now, prior to this, puzzles had to be copied by hand by, you know, by monks or, or, or whatnot. So each puzzle, of course, could only be solved once, you know, because no one wants to do a puzzle where the answers are already filled in. So they're very expensive. Um, only aristocrats could afford them. Now, Guttenberg, in effect, what he did is he democratized the crossword puzzle, uh, which some scholars will say was actually his greatest achievement. Number two, the invention of the ruler in 1874, a great labor-saving uh, innovation, followed in the 1940s by the introduction of grid paper. Um, my grandfather was a Bumphrey, and he was there when grid paper came in. He said it changed the industry overnight, uh, where prior to that, a box team was lucky to finish up uh, one puzzle in a week. Uh, with grid paper, suddenly they could turn out as many as three. The role of the inker, I think, is a little uh, underappreciated. Uh, people focus on the contribution of the penciler, and they don't realize how much influence the inker has over the, over the final product. For instance, uh, here are two crosswords, both drawn by Ben Mule, uh, a terrific penciler, a uh, two-time winner of the uh, Storch Prize. Um, the one on the left was inked by Richard Hubler, uh, the one on the right by Manuel Oscadero. Now, Manuel is a bold inker. Uh, he has that fiery Latino temperament. Uh, so look at these, um, you know, these deep moody blacks and the almost contemptuous way he treats the intersections. Now contrast this with Hubler's work, which is more uh, subtle, you might even say uh, intellectual. Um, there's a there's a three dimensionality to the negative spaces, a kind of uh, chiaroscuro effect. Um, now Hubler's corners are subdued, uh, ironic, self aware, while Manuel's corners are aggressive. Uh, there's a a barely repressed savagery to them. You know they grab you by the cojones. You know, two very different inkers, two radically different puzzles. Um, I'm in awe, quite frankly, of both of these Bumphreys. Uh, it's, you know, it, 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 it's an art form. We're in the midst of another great upheaval in the crossword industry. Uh, these upheavals seem to happen every 50 years or so with new technological developments. And what's really uh, shaking up the industry 
right now is computer technology. Um, a lot of the smaller papers are going over to puzzles that are drawn by machines. You know, it's it's cheaper, I guess it's faster, um, and some good artists are going hungry. And, and, you know, it's up to the newspaper editors, it's up to the public, it's up to each and every crossword fan out there. Are you willing to settle for these uh, bland, uh, generic, I mean, you know, sure, the lines are all straight and and the squares are all in the right place and you know the ink is all smooth and even but where's the human touch like for instance I'm working on on this puzzle for the for the gazette it was uh, penciled by Hubert Quizlet the grid was designed by Arlie Latosh uh, John Falkingsworth set the squares the letter counter uh, was uh, Frank Wu and you know here's today's puzzle from the advocate which was you know, churned out by some anonymous drone sitting at a computer. I mean, you know, there's there's just there's just no comparison.